what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you this latest AOS IP ROM on this device and as you can see the build version over here is 28th May 2020 and there are two versions of this ROM which is this vanilla and the gapps included version I have flashed the gapps included one and you can see the change logs and stuff from here now let me just go into the Android version here as you can see this is based on Android 10 of course now the security patch is latest of May 5th 2020 this is the AOS IP build version over here which is 27th May 2020 even though on the build section it shows like 28th May kind of weird and you can see this is the GAPS version and it shows over here the stock kernel is perf dirty kernel over here as you can see then we have the SLNX status as enforcing let me go back and show you the system panel here in the like AOS IP updater we can check for updates there also shows a update but I'm pretty sure this is kind of a bug which shows like May 28th version which I have already flashed and the gestures is not present over here because that is moved into the customization section which I'll show you later on there is this front camera sound effect so you can disable this like sound effects if you want the front camera opening up or closing sound like to be disabled and the camera LED does work super fine which I'll show you later on but first let me talk about the flashing over here the flashing was really simple it is like any other ROM you just need to be on the latest MIUI firmware which is the 11.0.4 firmware I am on Raphael in global MIUI 11.0.4 firmware and with that you just need to flash the ROM file with fcrypt disabler if your storage is decrypted and that's it you can just reboot and it should work fine if you're coming from UI, make sure you format data if you're coming from any other custom ROM just make sure to wipe cache dalvik system data and flash the ROM with fcrypt disabler if your storage is encrypted you do not need the fcrypt disabler by the way now let me show you the stock camera which is really really bad in my opinion as you can see this is the snapdragon camera and i don't really like this camera app but yeah we don't have a choice instead of this stock camera this is the only one camera which is there i think you cannot even use the other two lenses so yeah this stock camera i do not like at all so that is the reason why i have installed this anx camera and this anx camera is the latest one which has the miui 12 kind of anx camera look as you are noticing this is working fine let me open the front camera as you can see the front camera does work and I see a little bit of bugs here and there in this camera app but yeah most of the time it does work this is the version 182 of the ANX camera I flashed it with orange box recovery and it is working fine and quick note about this ANX camera version 182 on this like AOS IP ROM it is working totally fine but let me tell you on the AIM ROM when I tried to flash this ANX camera it did not just work that's why I couldn't daily drive with that AIM ROM so just letting you guys know on the like latest build of the AIM ROM this ANX camera is not working or if you flash it the UI just won't boot into the system so yeah that's one bug that I have faced in the AIM ROM but on the AOS IP ROM the ANX camera flashing was fine in the video settings as you can see we have up to 4k and 60 fps option and it is working fine as you can see it actually works so no issues with this and you can have the normal photo mode and switching between lenses here as you can see is working super fine that's not an issue now in terms of gcam 7 i have already installed this apk of gcam 7 version 1.8 i guess of yonix and this has been working fine too with night sight and stuff if you want to use this gcam 7 click on the card right here now let me talk about the stock launcher to the left of this launcher we have the google's discover page swiping up gets you to the app drawer swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel and let me show you how the settings panel looks like and as you can see this is the pixel launcher i have already disabled these suggestions and that's how i am using it the double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen is not there but double tap to sleep on the status bar and stuff is there now let me show you the figment scanner speed here as you can see it does work from the always on display let me do it from the left thumb and it worked again now i'll try it with the like lock screen it unlocks now let's try with the lock screen with the left thumb and it unlocks now i'll try with the night light mode turned on when the display is yellowish now as you can see it unlocked from the always on display unlocked again from the always on display now from the lock screen unlocked now from the lock screen again with the night light turned on with left thumb as you can see it does unlock but the figment scanner is not the fastest experience but yeah it is pretty reliable i have no issues 
Now talking about unlocking, yes, we have only the fingerprint scanner option. We do not have the face unlock option in this ROM right now, as you are noticing no face unlock in the security settings. And if you're coming from Evolution X or something or some other ROM which has the fingerprint scanner icon like changing option and then the animations on the fingerprint scanner options, those things are not here simply. Now let me go back to the like other settings like network and stuff here. We do have the Wi-Fi calling and the Wi-Fi calling and Vaulty calling both are working fine without any issues. In the Owl's Nest, we get a lot of customizations and here, let me show you the customizations one by one. In the status bar section, we have the battery settings and here, you can change the battery style to icon portrait, circle, dotted circle, etc. And you can change the battery percentage position to inside the icon next to the icon. Then carrier label customizations are there. We have clock and date option as you can see, you can customize it as you're liking. Network traffic indicator is there but I'm using internet speed meter app. Inside system icons, we have the alarm and like headset, bluetooth, etc. icons. These are working fine. Here is the chronic logo. You can also have a custom logo if you would like. Then we have these many vaulty icons as you are noticing plethora of options in my opinion. Then we have the show 4G instead of LTE and stuff. Now inside quick settings panel we have the long press action and it will show like old style full page. So yeah you can use that if you want to. Then we have the brightness slider and the brightness slider on bottom and stuff. These things are there. In the notification panel we have the battery charging light. This is for this like camera light over here on the pop-up camera I mean and this light is working fine while charging and stuff so that's not a problem. We have show media heads up option and then pulse on always on then we have this custom color of this pulse settings so yeah we have the pulse option or the edge lighting option over here and in the navigation settings we have the navigation bar tuner arrow key while typing and stuff is there then we have the hardware buttons we have the screen of animation for some reason inside the hardware buttons i don't know why as you can see we have the option to change the screen of animation to crt or scale or default and then we have the advanced reboot option and as you can see in the power menu we do get the advanced reboot option so you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from here we have the lock screen settings here we have the battery info and you can like have the battery info always on the always on display so that's cool charging animation is there then we can have the power menu option enabled in the lock screen and if you disable it the power menu will not just appear in the lock screen so that's cool and the like virtualizer and stuff is there media cover art is there so you can use that now let me go into the gestures we have the aosp gesture settings we have a lot of things over here let me show you one by one inside activate the torch we have the screen of power button torch or like long press power button toggle torch this works super fine without any issues then we have the system navigation gestures and here we have the android 10 gestures working fine i have been using this gesture navigation of course and inside settings we have the gesture bar size changing option so that's why as you can see on the bottom this gesture bar is quite long if you are noticing and here we have more options for the advanced gestures as you can see extended swipe action and you can have any action from here then we have the full screen gestures if you want to hide this pill too and two button and three button navigation is there let me go back we have the swipe deck screenshot now let me show you which screenshot is this it is just a normal screenshot it does not like show you the option to expand the screenshot or something i guess then we have the adaptive playback option let me go back we have the double tap to sleep on status bar settings or the gestures over here now let me go back we have the advanced settings and here we have the vibrate on connect call call waiting and disconnect then we have the enable scaling option per app and then we have the about section of this AOS IP rom and you can have the developers info and stuff you can donate them from here if you want to in the battery settings we have the battery temperature status and it does not show like the degree celsius or something it just shows the number on the battery temperature settings as you can see it shows tap to switch scale but it doesn't switch so yeah it just shows like in celsius i guess and the screen on time shows up over here and in terms of battery life i have had no issues i would say i could get about eight to nine hours of screen on time easily on this rom so that's pretty cool and you can get like almost a full working day of usage with one single charging and the 18 watt fast charging works super fine here so that's not a problem you can see the full battery usage from here and of course you can change the thermal profiles per app we also have the battery saver that works fine too and the battery manager of the like stock android kind of thing is working fine in the display settings we have the brightness level night light and stuff then adaptive brightness or auto brightness option is there auto rotate screen option is there colors you can change it the default one is boosted then we have the lock screen display and here always on display and stuff 
Let me go back. We have the font size, display size, and the dark theme option is there. You can schedule it if you want to. Inside themes, we have these kind of themes. And in my opinion, I had to set a custom theme to get this like red kind of accent color, which I'm using over here. And like if you want to get the totally pitch black background, you have to set a custom theme just like this. Let me show you. You can choose from here. It will show up over here. As you can see, it shows black AF. So this is the one if you are using with the black or dark theme, this will show the pitch black kind of color in the background. So you tap next and you can choose the accent colors from here as you are noticing. There are plethora of accent colors here, so it's not limited, I would say. But yeah, it's not as much as like other ROMs, which like where you get millions of colors changing option. Plethora of options over here. You do not need to worry about accent colors in this ROM. And you can just hit next, choose a font and then you can like set a theme. So I have did that and I have added this custom theme. Inside clocks, we have these kind of options. So that's why my like lock screen clock looks like this. You can also have a lot of them like this one and this one, I guess. But I have been using this one, works fine for me. And inside wallpapers, we have this is the like stock wallpaper, of course. And the living universe section is there. So we have these many like live wallpapers by default. Also, the anti flicker mode or the DC dimming mode is there. Now, talking about the customizations, I miss only one feature over here that I can say that is the like swipe to adjust brightness on the status bar. That feature is simply missing, or I couldn't just find that. So yeah, I miss that feature over here in this ROM. It would be like pretty good if they implemented that feature. In the sound settings, we have the audio direct and it's just closing up right now. I don't know why. But yeah, this Mi Audio Direct over here works super fine with like 3.5 headphones and I would say Hi-Fi audio and stuff is working fine too. And even with Bluetooth headsets, the sound is loud and clear. So I had no issues with like audio on this ROM. And touch vibration, screenshot sound, you can disable them. Then we have some like vibration for calls and stuff. That's pretty much it for the customizations, I guess, on this ROM. I would say in terms of stability, this ROM is pretty good. And on the stock launcher, as you can see, everything seems pretty smooth and widgets and stuff on the home screen does work fine. And the DRM info shows as a level one, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And even though the safety net status fails with this like safety net check, but the Google Pay I have already set it up. It is working fine. I have no issues with Google Pay, but with some other apps, you might face some problems. You got to keep that in mind. Gaming performance and stuff should be pretty good on this ROM. And the daily driving performance is like, it seems to be pretty good. And here is the Android and Geekbench score of this ROM. And here in the quick settings panel, let me show you, let me add some things. The FPS info option is just not there. And I do not even see the screen recording option. Those two options are just missing, I guess, in this like quick setting toggles or something. So yeah, you do not get the screen recording option here and the like FPS info by default at least. So that's been it guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.